Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection podcast. Today is a solo episode and I have a uh, topic I want to dive into that is around length and partials. There was a recent uh, preprint study put out um, and I want to just dive into my updated kind of thoughts on uh, length and partials and how to uh, take it away and how you can apply it uh, to your training. But first, before I do that, I just want to go over a few ways you can help support the podcast. First, if you found this podcast to be helpful in any way, if you could leave a rating and review, and that will help more people find this podcast. Again, I want to continue to get this information out to more people. And the best way to do that is through other people seeing that it's helpful and has helped them. But again, if you could do that, it would be much appreciated. And again, I appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. Next, if you haven't yet, give me a follow on Instagram, Jeff, H-O-E-H-N underscore. And that's where I'm most active on social media. If you have any questions regarding the podcast, anything that didn't make sense, anything you need clarification on, or if you just have general questions and uh, you would like them to potentially be answered on here, that's the best place to find me with that. So with that out of the way, let's dive into today's topic. So length and partials, and this is the hot topic. If you look at my episodes I've had uh, in the past year, there's we've covered this, I guess the past two years pretty extensively. I put out an episode that the main reason I want to do this is because I'm looking back, I wasn't overly thrilled with that episode. But if you want to get my thoughts from back in February, I in episode 400, I have long muscle length training, and you can check that out. But again, this is going to be more up to date and uh, ideally will be better um, than that one. But that is there if you want to see how maybe things have changed and what, what I talked about there. I would say probably the big difference too is I was lumping together stretch mediated hypertrophy and w- with long muscle or with and long muscle length with like length of partials. And there is it is slightly different, right? So again, with length and partials, we're talking about working in that lengthened position through a, a full range, through the range of motion, right? So let's dive into that real quick. Let's go over what is length and part, what are length and partials? And yeah, we have our full range of motion, right? So full range of motion, let's just take a bicep curl. That's where you work through that full range, right? You're at the bottom, you come all the way to the top. So we have, basically we have the so that's full range of motion. Then we could break it down into partials, all right? Well, the thing with partials is that's a partial range of motion, right? So it's, what are we particularly talking about? There's a shortened position, and again, in a bicep curl, that's going to be at the top where basically your arm is, is flexed, right? That's going to be the shortened position. Then we have the lengthened position where that's at the bottom, and you can think of your bicep being a little bit more stretched. Now we can take this through all other muscle groups as well, too. Uh, again, whenever you're contracting and the muscles get closer together, that's going to be that shortened position, right? So let's take the triceps again, same thing. Let's lengthen when you're, if you're doing like a skull crusher, it would be at the bottom, right? Those triceps are stretched at the top. They're going to come closer together. That's going to be the shortened position. Same thing with the chest at the bottom. Your, stretch, your chest is going to be stretched at the top of the range of motion. It's going to be the short, the short position. Pull downs and rows are a little bit different, whereas like the bottom part of a row is going to be where your back muscles are stretched at the top part, which would be the lengthened position at the top part of it. That's where they're short and that's going to be the short position, right? And then lat pull down would be the opposite. The top is going to be where your back muscles uh, are stretched at the bottom. That's going to be where they're shortened there. So that's, so basically length and partials would be in that lengthened position where the muscle is stretched. So that's just a kind of brief summary of it, like what it is, just so you have a general kind of background on it there. There's been some research in the last couple of years where it's, hey, again, for a while, it was like, hey, full range of motion. All right, that is going to be the, if we break this down, full range of motion is you're going to see more muscle growth in that. And again, this was like, back in the day for me, this was like, oh yeah, for sure. You don't want to have a partial, like, why would you do partials? You're just cheating if you're doing partials. As with a lot of things in fitness, we have to dive a little bit deeper, right? So again, the full... Yes, when you compare full range of motion to say like a shortened partial. So again, let's talk one that I didn't go over was the quad. So the back squat, when you're at the top, that's where your muscles are going to be shortened. And then as you come down, they start to get lengthened a bit more, right? And when in that particular one, yeah, if you're not coming all the way down, you're doing a partial, but you're doing that partial in the shortened position, right? So again, when they looked at these two, it's yeah, the one that did the full range of motion, they grew more muscle than the shortened. As more research came out, people started to realize that, oh, hey, maybe it's, if we look at this range of motion, that, that lengthened position, the one where it's stretched, that's like the money, right? That's where you get the bulk of your muscle growth at. And so there's been research on this and, and it's gone so far as to some people being like, hey, I'm only going to do length and partials. I'm going to totally skip out on the shortened position, which teaser, I don't think that is necessarily what you need to do. I think there's a benefit to doing full range, but I'll talk about what my takeaways are. And so this has led to just a ton of back and forth on this topic, right? You have some people in the camp where, again, like I said, they're like, oh, hey, just do length and partials. That's what all your training needs to be. You have some people in the middle that were like, hey, I'm not going to fully get rid of the shortened position. Maybe I spend a little bit more time doing some length and partials, or I spend more time in that lengthened kind of range of motion. And then you have people on the other end of the spectrum. They're like, stupid. You don't need to do that at all. It's actually worse, not worse than that you wouldn't do it, but people train individuals aren't going to see any muscle growth from doing that. You have 
these camps with it. And so, again, this has led to a lot of debate on social media. It's also led to people wanting to do more research on this, right? Like we obviously need more research. We need more research on muscle, on certain muscle groups. We need more research on comparing these kind of full range of motions or uh, partials with each other. We need more on trained individuals, right? Because again, that's another knock on it is, oh, hey, this can only happen to beginners for a short period of time. But after a while, things are going, your body's going to adapt and it's not good for trained individuals. This led to this new kind of preprint study, which was length and partial repetitions elicit similar muscular adaptations as a full range of motion during resistance training in trained individuals. So this was with trained individuals, right? And they looked at comparing full range of motion with the with length and partials, right? And they found that basically it was very similar. The results were similar. So again, you can take this two ways, right? You could take it one as, well, length and partials are not better, so don't do them. Or you could take it as, hey, you did less range of motion and you got the same results, right? So there's kind of two ways that you could go about this. This kind of reminds me of the deload study where basically they found that deloading didn't hurt muscle growth, but it didn't also help it, right? So it was like one of those things where, okay, so should you deload or should you not, right? Again, you could take that both ways. You could take it one way as you should deload because it, and it didn't hurt anything or no, you don't need to deload because it didn't hurt anything. And again, as with any study, it's more limited on the time frame. I think that study was like eight weeks. This one, I believe, was also eight weeks as well, too. So again, we do have that. But that's where I'm at with this is, again, they weren't necessarily worse, but they weren't better either, right? So that's here's basically the kind of summary of this, too, is basically omitting the shortened position altogether didn't hurt growth in highly trained individual participants. Training in a more stretched position is a safe bet to increase muscle growth. That said, it remains unclear whether there's a point of diminishing returns. There's a point where just longer muscle length from a length and partial standpoint may not be better, right? So it's like you don't necessarily always just have to get the biggest stretch in the world either. I think that's one, maybe one aspect where people have ran too far with it is over overly stretching, right? And again, there there might be a point to where too much is, is not going to be great, right? So again, you probably don't want to get the most stretch possible, but you at least want to make sure you get a decent stretch, right? But basically more evidence is needed specifically comparing length and partials to a full range of motion and a complete program. The One of the authors, Pack, he said his the evidence is still leaning towards a potential benefit of length and partials over full round for hypertrophy, but we lack evidence in this regard. So again, there's going to need to be more research. And again, remember, it's just one study. So we have to take all the studies into consideration here. And from my understanding, again, so there's equal gains between it. And like we said, there's, you can take that two ways. One, you need to, you should do them. One, you don't need to do them. But basically now we have five studies directly comparing length and partials to full run. And we have three that show more growth. And then we have two that show no difference. So again, and from my understanding, this isn't done in all the muscle groups yet. I think there's going to be one on the delts done soon. So there is going to be more research around this. So I'm sure over the next year, I'll have at least one or two more of these podcasts where we go over it. So that's where we're at with the research, right? I'm not going to dive in too much detail into the specifics. I think the big takeaway here is that there was equal gains and you can take that how it is. So what I want to do is I want to go over my updated thoughts on them and how I would apply them into training. Okay. So I think first the main muscle growth principles are way more important uh, than, than really focusing on like length and partials. Again, they can be helpful, but the most important things that we need to focus on are going to be your training intensity, right? We want to make sure you're still training relatively hard. If that's not there, it doesn't matter if you're doing length and partials, full range of motion, whatever it may be, right? You, you need to work on that. Again, your overall volume is going to be important. So we want to make sure that you're training with enough volume, right? Somewhere probably between that six to 20 reps or six to 20 sets per week. And again, making sure that, that those sets are taken relatively close to failure, right? Probably somewhere between one and three RAR. Sorry, I lost my train of thought here. But again, the nutrition side of things, right? Making sure we're eating enough protein in combination with that, right? These are also going to be things that are, are super important. But again, we don't want to overthink this and then skip out on the training intensity, the, the training volume. Oh, in the rep range too, right? Like probably most of your training should be between like six and 12 reps for building muscle, right? And again, you apply those things that I just talked about. We should be, we'll be well on our way here. So again, this is going to be less of less important than say those things. We're also talking a small percentage here. This isn't like a massive difference. It's not like if you're all of a sudden implement these, you're just going to see this massive amount of growth and this is going to lock the secrets, the secret thing to gains, right? That's not going to be the case. We're talking a small percentage. So again, we need to take that into consideration. I will say the big thing here, like with it is we just don't want to skip out on that length and position. Okay. So whether you decide to do a full range of motion or you decide to do just length and partials, or maybe you incorporate some length and partials, the big thing is that 
you just probably don't want to skip out on that length and position, right? So again, let's take a chest press. You probably don't want to skip out on that bottom portion, right? Bicep curl, you probably don't want to shorten that range of motion to where you're not getting in that length and position, right? Same thing with the triceps. You probably want to make sure you come down. Let's just say the skull crusher, you make sure you want to come down and then you can come all the way up if you want, or you can stop it a little bit short there. Or maybe you do most of your sets that way. And then one set you do length and partials. So again, that's the big thing is we just want to make sure we don't skip out on that length and position when we're training, whether you decide to do a full range of motion or, or not. It's probably going to be better for things like if we do decide to do length and partials where we only work in that length and position, it's probably going to be better for things like maybe your delts and like your back and like maybe even calves. Biggest reason, and, and I guess you could potentially say, yeah, probably calves, delts, back, like chest, for example, it's like you are, if you're doing a full range of motion and you're already coming down, you're getting a lot of that length and exposure already. So spending more time there, it's probably less beneficial for something like that. Again, you could still utilize it and, and, and throw it in from time to time, but it's probably more, it's probably more necessary for things like your delts and your back, just because with those. So for example, let's take a lat pull down. Like I said, at the top, that's where you're in that length and position. And if you always stop because you can't get a full range of motion and, and that bottom portion is the shortened position, if you always stop because you can't get that full range of motion at the bottom, we're probably missing out on a little bit in say your, the, that length and position for that specific exercise. So again, it's, that's probably where it's most beneficial. However, we don't have direct research on say the delts in the back. And again, I believe Jeremy Ethier, who I did have on the podcast is going to, I think he's uh, funding a study that's going to look at that, those muscle groups specifically. And so again, I think it's good. I think it's a safe bet to utilize them in your training. Uh, again, maybe you don't have your, all your training just be length and partials, but I think if you have some exercises that you do length and partials and you incorporate some of it, I think that's a great way to do it. For example, it could be, hey, your first two sets of a, say, of a, say a face away cable curl, you're doing full range of motion. And then maybe that last set, you're just doing length and partials, right? You're only getting that bottom portion of it, right? Or you could do it where you do three sets that are full range of motion. And then you, on that last set, you just try to eke out a couple of partials where you don't come all the way up. Again, those are like two examples that you could utilize it to where you're not you're taking advantage of this potential benefit, but you're also not completely changing your training and you're still working in that full range of motion most of the time, right? So again, that those are some ways that you could incorporate it into your training. And I think the big thing here is we can be flexible with our range of motion. In the past for me, it used to be like, I had to get full range of motion. I had to do the entire like range of motion. Otherwise it's some cheating, whatever it is. But I think now with all this research, towards the end of a set or the last set of that exercise, or again, that entire last set of the exercise, you could stop a little short and eke out a little bit more progress if you just focus on that length and position, right? You don't have to get that full range of motion every single time. Again, probably most of the time we want to, but again, we can get a little bit more out of it and we can be more flexible with that range of motion than initially thought. So long as you're spending more time in that length and position versus the short, right? So again, you wouldn't want to do a bicep curl where you just do the top part. Again, you could, but there's no, in terms of where the research is at, that's probably not going to lead to more muscle growth than just doing that full range of motion. I think that's where we're at right now with this uh, subject. And again, more research will be coming out on this in the future. I'll have people on it. Uh, I'm going to have Jordan and Brian on the podcast here. I'm sure we're going to touch on this study and I'm sure I'm going to touch on this study with multiple people throughout the next couple months. And obviously over the next few years, as more and more research comes out, we'll be able to determine. But as of right now, I think it's a safe bet to incorporate some length and partials into your training. And at the very least, you want to make sure you're not skipping out on that length and position in your training. And that's where we're at right now. So let me know if you guys have any questions on this. If you're not sure on how to apply this and you would like to start to maybe incorporate some of this in your training, then my free 30 minute strategy calls for you. The link to that is in the show notes. And that's it for this episode. I'll chat with you guys next time. Mm -hmm.